Hello, I'm Jeff Stein. Welcome to the Iowa Hall of Pride and this special exhibit honoring an Iowa broadcasting legend. I'm standing here in the state-of-the-art, high-definition television studio where WHO presents its news broadcasts. WHO television went on the air in 1954, but 10 years before that, a young man fresh from the University of Iowa started work at WHO Radio. And he's been on the air on 1040 WHO from May 18, 1944 to today. That's more than 67 years. Of course, I'm talking about the inimitable Jim Zobel, who celebrated his 90th birthday on September 3rd of this year. In his fabulous career, the former sports director for WHO Radio and Television has called the play-by-play -play for some 6,000 events, including every Iowa football and basketball game for 50 years, and the Iowa high school boys and girls state basketball tournaments for 52 years. His autobiography, released last year, summed up his feelings about a life behind the sports microphone. It's titled simply, I love it, I love it, I love it. Back in the great days of radio, and that, I'll have to admit, that uh, takes me back a ways, and that's when I started out. You had Bill Stern, you had Ted Husing, Ronald Reagan was, uh, Dutch Reagan was right up among them because we were such a big station, WHO, WGN, Chicago, and uh, there wasn't a whole lot of competition with all the proliferation of, of smaller stations and all the other play-by-play -play going on. So you listened to them, and you didn't necessarily style yourself after them, but you kind of thought to yourself, well, that'd be great, that'd be fun, that'd be exciting to be involved in an emotional thing like this. And of course, uh, I started out living in Davenport. My dad used to take me to Iowa Hawkeye football games back in the 1930s. So I kind of grew up with them and kind of grew up with Ronald Reagan. Jim Zobel may have grown up listening to Ronald Reagan, but soon generations would know him as the voice of the Iowa Hawkeyes. He spent a half century in the Iowa football press box and courtside for basketball games with many memorable game calls. Wild and crazy college football. I love it, I love it, I love it. Vlasic will hold, and Rod Houtland will attempt the kick. All right, and now we're just about ready for football history one way or the other. Just about ready for the play. The center ball is snapped. The kick is up, and it's long enough. And Zobel is a member of numerous Halls of Fame and received the top honor in American broadcasting, the Marconi Award, as National Personality of the Year in 1993. And as he notes, his close association with the University of Iowa dates back to his own college days. Went to Iowa, was editor-in-chief of the Daily Iowa, and got the job in my junior year. Was a columnist for him. Was fascinated by, you know, maybe becoming a war correspondent, uh, maybe becoming a Hollywood scriptwriter or something like that. Then at the age of 21, I graduated, went to Chicago, became a scriptwriter for CBS. And at that time, through, uh, I guess we're guided a little bit by fate and, and being at the right place at the right time, some people from WHO came through. And I'd always looked up to WHO, and I thought, if I become a broadcaster, uh, I, w I, I think I want to go to WHO. And, and as luck would have it, they came through. They needed somebody in their news department. I was going back to Iowa to pick up my degree, which I took by correspondence my last three hours. And uh, Jack Shelley uh, hired me on the spot when I was back there, and that started the whole thing. Jim Zobel was actually hired as a news reporter for WHO Radio and had to work his way into doing sports. 
In fact, he was one of the first 10 p.m. news anchors on WHO-TV. A versatile broadcaster, he even hosted a daily radio talk show on general topics for 20 years. However, not everyone was sold on his choice of career. I know my dad was a stubborn old German and, and he was in the banking business and the final 10 years of his life he got to realize that I had a real job. He kept asking me, well when are you going out and get a real <laughs> job? You know, you're out there just having fun uh, and, and enjoying yourself. While Jim Zobel enjoyed himself doing radio shows and play-by-play, -play, another generation came to know him as the nightly sports anchor on TV 13 for 25 years into the 1980s, including this time as part of the famous Eyewitness News team of the mid-1970s. He even made a TV comeback in the late 1990s, reaching yet another generation of viewers. <laughs> Witness News with Jack Cafferty, Bill Thomas, Jerry Reno, Jim Zabel, and the rest of the Eyewitness News team. Live from WHO TV 13, your 24-hour news source, John Bachman, Kathy Soltero, Jim Zabel with sports, and meteorologist Ed Wilson with your Doppler 13 forecast. This is News Center 13 at 10. The sport of bowling is usually thought of to be kind of in leisurely terms, but at a recent tournament in Houston... We're starting to get a clear picture of why prized recruit Jeff Walker left the University of Iowa. Iowa City Police have issued an arrest warrant for Walker. Romania's darling of the parallel bars, gymnast Nadja Kamenich, has been named the Female Athlete of the Year. Well, who will pitch for the Cardinals in Game 6 tonight? No one would say, especially manager Tony La Russa, he'd been trying a little Hayden Fry-like psychology. Zobel's enthusiasm for sports, and life generally, made him an Iowa broadcasting legend. He was a popular speaker at banquets across the state, gaining a reputation for being one of the hardest working broadcasters around, with a schedule that would make two normal people tired. For 33 years, he was host of the weekly Let's Go Bowling program on Sundays, which featured a team of Des Moines bowlers each week against the out-of-towners, bowlers from towns all around our state. And another Sunday tradition, the weekly sports prediction show Beat the Bear, featuring the football and basketball coaches from Drake, Iowa State, and Iowa, and of course, the fabulous bear. Each Sunday night, they'd review the past week's games and look forward to the next week's schedule, trying to outdo the bear, which was the mascot for Hams, the show's original sponsor. A revamped edition with a live studio audience even made its way to TV in the 1990s, too. But it was for being on the scene, whether at the state fair or a ball game, or doing a daily sports report, where Jim Zobel was best known. What does he think it takes to succeed at such a high level? I don't know. I think you have to uh, like the excitement of the chase and the thrill of going to your job. And uh, it's not like going to a bank or not like going to a normal job, perhaps, where things are pretty predictable. It, uh, you, know, you don't know how, who's going to win, who's going to lose. And that's the excitement of it. It's an emotional thing, and it, it helps to keep you young, dealing with all those people and all the, sure, there's ups and downs in it. Uh, and, and it's kind of life. Uh, emphasized, I think, in a dramatic and emotional way when you watch a basketball game or a football game. And I love the state of Iowa. I, you know, I don't have to tell you that. My, my life is here. My history is here. My nostalgia is here. I lived and breathed Iowa sports and still do, doing uh, 58 uh, state championship years and uh, basketball, high school basketball and Rose Bowl games and following the Hawkeyes. And I did Iowa State, too. Worked with Gary Thompson on Iowa State. I did the Maury John years at Drake University, did all those when they played UCLA for the championship. So I've kind of touched it all. And Iowa is just a special place. I, I know it uh, is uh, in my heart and in my mind because I was born and raised here. And After 67 years, Jim Zobel is still heard every week on WHO Radio. After Saturday's Hawkeye football game, and with his old friend, Coach Jim Walden, on the Sunday night Two Guys Named Jim show. Whether interviewing athletes on the field and in the locker room, or sharing stories with coaches or broadcast partners, everyone has a smile after their contact with Jim Zobel. It's contagious. I've often said the time to quit is the time when there's no zest left, there's no thrill left in, in doing it. And, uh, and to me, it's just as thrilling now as it ever was. 
I hope you've enjoyed this tribute to one of the most important figures in Iowa broadcasting history. I'm Jeff Stein. Enjoy your visit today to the Iowa Hall of Pride.